Meet Ken Gao, an MIT graduate who's ready to start his Quan hedge fund. He is convinced his models will make a killing in the market. That is because he has stolen these models from Two Sigma, a well-known quant hedge fund in the world. After quitting Two Sigma two months ago, Gao hacked into their system and grabbed their secretive quantitative trading models. These models have made Two Sigma billions of dollars. Now in the hands of Gao, he will use them to print money, literally. Funded in 2001, Two Sigma has become the very top quant fund in the world, whose performance is in the same league as Renaissance Technologies and D.E. Shaw. Today, through the use of algorithms with its unique culture, the firm manages over $52 billion in assets with more than 1,400 employees across offices in New York, Hong Kong, and Tokyo. What are those models? And more importantly, why are they so protected by Two Sigma. Inside this pizza hut was the hedge fund legend, Paul Tudor Jones. In there, he was having a confidential meeting with the managing director of D.E. Shaw, John Overdeck. Together, they envisioned a new type of quant fund that can compete head-on with Rentec and D.E. Shaw. Without hesitation, Paul Tudor Jones decided to provide a generous seed capital for the new hedge fund. They also invited David Siegel, who was the chief information officer at Tudor's Investment Corporation, to join the team of this potentially groundbreaking hedge fund. Tudor Jones has strong confidence in both of them, confidence backed by their impressive resumes. The financial market is known to attract gamblers and risk takers, but it also attracts nerds who have a strong desire to make sense of this complex system. These math wizards try to understand the market by making a lot of money. John Overdeck is a Stanford-educated mathematician who was working alongside Jeff Bezos at D.E. Shaw. And yes, that Jeff Bezos who runs a little company called Amazon. <laughs> Siegel is just as impressive. He holds an artificial intelligence PhD from MIT and built a successful fintech company sold to Merrill Lynch. After that, he became the chief technology officer at Tudor's Investment Corporation. But financial market is a highly complex game, where even quants with PhDs often failed miserably. Well, you know, our, our vision is really to uh, focus on the capabilities of data science. And we think of investing as a data science problem. From day one, they decided to differ themselves from other hedge funds. They considered Two Sigma to be a tech startup whose mission is to build technologies to extract signals in the financial market. Uh, we think that um, by incorporating more and more information on the world into making investment decisions, we can do a better job. Uh, you, you know, this is nothing really in a way a new idea. Um, uh, investors of all ages have wanted to use data in making their investment decisions. No, no investor would say that they're just you know, waking up in the morning and randomly picking something to invest in. But the ability to basically incorporate huge information uh, occurring around the world into every single investment decision that you make, that's only possible by using these advanced data science methods. And I think that you know, even in the field of investing, we're still in the early days of what um, uh, these kinds of methods can do. Overdeck and Siegel know the first year's performance is going to mean the life and death of their new company. Overdeck and Siegel come to the resolution that they should start with equities because they're the most liquid and have the most data to build their models. 
On day one, they rolled out dozens of models for an equity market neutral strategy, exploiting hundreds of short-term patterns in the market. It was an instant success, making them double-digit returns in its first year. At the same time, the market was crushed by the dot-com bubble. The markets are incredibly difficult to predict. So these quants do look for models, but most of the models have only a very tiny edge. Even if you have a bet that works 51% of the time, by law of large numbers, that is a good model and it is still generating alpha. Well, if you go to a casino, you probably know that casinos overall make more money than they lose to the players. Finding an edge in the market, to me, meant finding a way to do better than uh, investing in index funds. While their models do the most of the work printing them money, Two Sigma spend majority of the time developing new models. In 2004, Two Sigma launched Eclipse, a set of models for a macro strategy, starting to trade futures and foreign exchange. The problem with the quant funds is that these patterns die out. What always ends up happening to Two Sigma and many other quant funds is that they have to constantly look for more patterns or the return will suffer. Unlike D.E. Shaw or Rintag, who have a short holding period of two days on average, in 2004, the firm also started Spectrum, a fund for a longer holding period. This new fund cleared pathway to a more scalable asset management business. Two Sigma then launched a fund called Absolute Return in 2011, which had an even longer holding period. There has been a funny trend in the world of hedge fund. A lot of traditional funds started to use more statistical methods and styles, while at the same time, some quant funds started to do more traditional fundamental trading. For example, the majority of business for Citadel and DE Shaw is now just old-fashioned stock picking. This trend is called the quantumental style. There is a lot of um, interest these days for what are called quant quantumental firms. Two Sigma was ahead of its time using quantumental approach to investing, which uh, has only recently become popular. One way um, is combine to add a, a machine learning layer to your traditional fundamental decision making. Suppose that you have uh, you work for a firm that is very fundamental where people make decisions based on either book information, accounting, or traditional economic models. And now, um, what you would like to do is not to challenge the decisions ba made by those models, but what you would like to do is to determine what is the betting size. How much should we bet on this forecast made by the fundamental model? Even with the smartest brains and the most powerful computers, they couldn't predict the madness of the market in 2008. Everyone, our next guest is an internationally known expert on quantitative finance who warns that the banks should not trust their mathematical models. Basically, he called this crisis, nobody responded. Well, the mathematical models were never perfect. And one of the problems, though, was really that, that a lot of people working derivatives thought that they were much better than they, than they actually were. And there is an incentive built into the system, the, the kind of moral hazard that that encourages people to believe in these things because it allows them to trade and trade bigger and bigger and bigger. And one of the problems with a lot of risk management techniques, for example, is they, they can be used to hide risk when really they should be alerting you to risk. In 2007, stocks plummeted in August, sparked by a series of black swan events, including the collapse of two Bear Stern credit funds. This also triggered the collapse of quant funds because their models started to fail. This, in Quant's term, is called a regime shift. Regime shifts are large, abrupt, and persistent structural changes in the financial market. However, in 2008, the year of the financial crisis, Two Sigma's funds finished in high single digits, while most hedge funds lost money. 
but his investors still panicked. Altogether, 30% of Two Sigma's assets were cashed out. Siegel and Overdag were furious and decided to never raise money from the same type of investors again. Instead, they will only take money from institutional investors who understand quant finance. Just like Citadel and DE Shaw, Two Sigma has significantly expanded to more diverse strategies. Now Two Sigma has thousands of profitable trading patterns, and any one of them could be used to make successful trades. That is why they're so heavily guarded. Ken Gao was an employee at Two Sigma. After participating in the creation of many models at the Quant Fund, Gao realized he could make more money by starting his own shop. All he has to do now is to take some of these models and research. He will start building his own billion dollar quant fund in no time. In the end, Gao was caught and pleaded guilty to illegally accessing and duplicating proprietary and confidential information related to the firm's trading methods and was sentenced eight months in jail as of October 2014. Quant fund is funny business. It's not like the natural science when you discover some patterns in physics, for example, the patterns tend to stay intact. In the financial market, if you find some patterns and publish them, they will cease to work. That is why be suspicious when someone tries to sell you their profitable trading patterns.